Hello everyone. So a little update on the count off races I've been having between various members of my Tandy computer family here. Um, and on the screen here on the Color Computer 3 is one version of the assembly language program I wrote to basically count from 1 to 5,000 and print the numbers to the screen. Something that sounds so simple is actually quite a few steps in assembly language. I've got to actually keep track of the number, count up, compare it with the value I want to stop at, 5,000. And then I have to take each increment of the counter and I have to make that human readable. And the bytes that are in RAM don't necessarily match something a human would be able to understand offhand. The value A0C1 wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense. So that involves a bunch of divisions. You divide each place by 10, take the remainder, and then add to that whatever the value is to turn that into the ASCII character version of itself. So. 0, 1 through 9, etc. And you do that, you divide by 10, then do that for the tens place, 100th place, 1,000th place. And you write it out to the screen. And that's essentially what this program does. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you can see here the various pieces, you know, add one, compare it, if we're done, finish, store it, you know, convert it to a string, and then we're going to write it out to the screen, and then we're going to branch back up and do the whole thing again. So over on the Model 16, I've done something similar, but I cheated a bit. Um, I haven't actually written my own version of this, but I kind of wanted to see what would happen if I let this, wrote the program in C and let the compiler dump the assembler out to the screen and see what that would look like. And it turns out that the overall flow of the program really matches the one that I came up with on the Color Computer 3 about a month ago or so. Um, it's pretty simple. So, you know, initialize the counter, increment it by one, compare it with 5001. If it's less than, go to the count loop, do this whole thing. And then for each one, it prints the value out. So load the uh, value of the counter into the stack and jump to printf, and it'll pop it off the stack and dump it out to the screen. So printf, this, the libc uh, printf function is what's doing the translation for me instead of me having to do it myself. But um, the underlying process is similar enough that at least for this, I could kind of get a comparison. So you might be asking yourself, why count? Why do this? It isn't really reflective of the performance of a processor. And you're right. It has nothing to do with the performance of the processor. In fact, one of the reasons in my mind to do it is that a count is so simple that it lets you show the differences in overhead between different platforms, between different architectures. All of the overhead that goes with print, converting a number to a string, printing it to the screen, making it, use it usable is really what drives how people perceive the speed of a computer system. And more importantly, this whole idea was actually hatched by Lonnie Falk. So Lonnie Falk's publication for the color computer, the rainbow, on volume one, issue one, the very first issue, actually talked about something I found interesting. And it really kind of goes to how perception can affect one's view of a computer's speed and capability. And that's where he tells you, if you want to see our Radio Shack store manager's eyes boggle, just put a color computer next to a Model 3 in a store, write a short 4 next loop to count the numbers from 1 to 1,000, and then run them at the same time. And can you guess which wins? Yep, old color computer, which is interesting. Um, when I've raced the color computer in the Model 4 in Model 3 mode, the Model 4 wins, whether or not I print the numbers. So it's close, but I don't know if that's uh, variations in the Coco 3 and the Model 4. The Model 4 in Model 3 mode is at 2 megahertz, but anyway, that is what it is. Okay, so I've got my program going here on the Model 16. It's just waiting for me to push enter. On the color computer, I've loaded it, but I haven't actually executed it yet, so let's do that. And this is the versions of the program that you saw in the previous segment where I had the source code up on the screen. So this one goes out and prints it to the screen. On the color computer, it uses the ROM routine in Color Basic and the ROM. And on the Model 16, it's using libc's printf function to print the numbers out to the screen. And to do this, you're going to have to trust me that I'm not cheating, because I'm going to have to enter at the same time. Okay, here we go. I could have set the phone down, and maybe I'll do that again next time just so that you can tell. And yes, that's whiskey. Retro computing is always better with a retro whiskey. The scotch may not be as old as the computers, but what are you going to do? And we're almost there. Color computer looks like it's got a bit of an edge. It does, but just barely. For this next one, I'm not going to hold the phone back here because it's not going to be that fast. So let's get up set up for the next test. 
Okay, for this second version, what I've pulled up is a version that doesn't actually translate it to a string or write it out. So you can see I write the prompts up here for the user. Is that my finger? There is. And that's about it. But in the loop itself, we just load the counter, add one, compare it to the max. If we're done, finish. Otherwise, go right back up to the loop and do it again. There's nothing written to the screen during the actual count operation. All we do is write the press any key to start and we're done prompts. But in terms of actually counting up, we don't do that. And you can see this version on the Model 16 is very similar. And down here we add one, compare it. If we're less than, we jump back up. And then if we are greater than, it just goes on to load the done string from down below and jump over to printf to jump it to the screen. And then when we're done, we go back to the beginning again. So with that in mind, let's just see how fast these are and how much different they are. Okay, so the Model 16 has my S's for silent, silent counter loaded. And that's, that's um, represented by the assembler that's on the screen there. And then we have over here the same thing, P count 6 is the same thing on the Color Computer 3. So rather than show you both machines at the same time, I'm just going to show you the difference in speed. And this is really interesting because um, still there's no real performance gain here. You know, if you're looking for something performance related or the capabilities of the individual processors, there are a lot of other great videos on YouTube that show people comparing mathematical prowess of various processors. This is not that. This is really just to show you the difference between architectures in terms of how fast they go given a specific implementation of something. So let's press a key here and see how long it takes to count to 5,000. And that's it. It takes less than half a second. I can get my finger off the key, but it doesn't actually... I can't get my hand out that far. It doesn't actually take very long to count. Done. 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 Okay. Let's look at the Model 16. Model 16 is interesting because it's instantaneous. It's faster than the Color Computer 3. And you might think it's faking it, but it really is. It's counting to 5,000. The thing is, all of the time spent in both of those programs has nothing to do with the count. It's all time spent translating whatever the current index value, whatever the increment is, to a string and then printing it out to the screen. And that's one of the things that you'll find is the overall speed of these machines really comes down to a mix of things, how the hardware and software are implemented and how the machine itself is, is designed, and also how you write your program. So I'll give you an example of that over here on the color computer. So on the first version of this that printed things out to the screen, it went through the ROM routine. Well, I have another version that cheats a little bit, and I'll show you that. Okay, in this version of the program, this is similar to the first one, except that I've made one big change. I, instead of having a separate string location in memory that I stored my string value in, I called that C out, count out, and then calling the color basic ROM routine to print it to the screen, I've done something different here. Instead, I've set it to the, the hex value for EC, and then you'll notice here, while I do count and I translate it to a string, I don't call anything to actually write it to the screen. I just count, increment, is it less than or is it less than yes or no translate it to a string loop back do it again so how does this work well let's take a look okay so the way that this works is that the color computers display is memory mapped and I can easily directly access it for EC comma 65 you see the letter a there and that's essentially what my program is doing. All I've done is cheated and said that the storage location for the string version of the increment we're counting at will be stored in a memory location that just happens to be in the middle of the screen. And when that happens, the machine will put the letter there and update it. I don't have to tell it to. So let's see this in action. Will it be faster than the other version where I was going through Color Basic to tell it to print the characters out? And the answer to that question is yes. It's, uh, what, 13 or 14 seconds. And the other version that uses the ROM routine to print it out takes closer to 30. So 
What does this tell us? Well, it tells us the perception of speed on any system comes down to a lot of things. How you write the program, and whether or not you take advantage of the hardware, how efficient you are, the language you use. I used assembly for these, and I used C over here, and then dorked around with the assembly. The output a little bit, but I let the compiler write it for me. But on this side, I wrote it myself. But either way, essentially what we're talking about here is how efficient a, very, a given programming language is. And just to drive this home, we're going to do one more. All right, so the last one of these. Um, in this version, I have a basic version of the first program. And all it does is run from 1 to 5,000, and it prints the numbers out to the screen with a space between them, just like the assembly output. 1, space 2, space 3. So we're going to give this a run, and we're going to see how it compares. And believe me, you might say, why didn't you do these in order? You're going to be able to tell. So let's go. And as you can see already, this is not fast. Um, we probably would have been to 1,000 by now on the assembler one or close, and this one we're not even there yet. In fact, I'm not going to make everybody suffer through waiting for this to count to 5,000 because we've got other things to do. So why is this? Well, basic is interpreted, of course. So it's got to, for each line, over and over, it's tokenized basic, but still it's got to read and follow the token, execute the instructions, come back, and do the same thing. It basically has to translate each line over and over again, in addition to actually performing the operations. So why get into this? Well, because I think the biggest lesson here is that regardless of what problem you're trying to solve or how fast the computer system, how you write the code, what you write the code in, how efficient you are, and how you store your data can have a profound effect on the speed of the system. And you wouldn't believe how many people I work with on a daily basis. I work in big data, and we have developers that write jobs all the time in various languages and store data. They love to store data as strings because it's flexible for them, but there's a whole lot of price to pay for that. And they don't understand why their code runs slowly or the platform doesn't seem to have the capacity to keep up for them. And these old computers really do a nice job of showing us exactly why this is, how you choose to store your data, how you interact with it, how efficient you are, what language you use really has a profound effect on not only the perception of speed, but the actual speed of a system. And that's one of the reasons I chose the count here. The count is irrelevant. I'm not talking about mathematical computation. I'm really just talking about efficiency here. And you can squeeze a lot more performance out of a lot less horsepower if you choose the right language and you store your data as efficiently as possible. But that takes a lot of thought and a lot of time. So that, I think, will wrap up this series for the count. I may actually handwrite the assembly language version of this, but the one that the compiler generated was so close to the one that I had in terms of the basic count operations that I don't know that I'm going to sweat it. But the interesting thing is, despite the fact that this machine here runs at 8 megahertz and this one here runs at 0.89 megahertz, even went out without printing it to the screen. This one was relatively close, but the Model 16 kicked its pants. So, well, I think that's it. Thank you all for joining and watching this. I know it's probably boring for many, but I figure this is a great way to just kind of see these old computers put through some paces.